Hi, everybody. This is Arthur at Arthur Ease Your Mind here at YouTube. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is my first show, but I'd also like to thank everyone for the love, the support, and the subscriptions that I've received since I've joined the channel. Also, a huge, wonderful shout out to Mel and Linda. If it weren't for you two guys, I probably wouldn't be here. Well, my mom and dad may have something to do with that too, but that's another story. So I had said, let's ask some questions and let's have some answers. In the meantime, some really great stuff came out. I don't know if you heard about Trump today. So let's get into that first, okay? First of all, Judge Cannon came out with a date, a trial date to start on, when was it? On May 14th. Now, it's almost like she split the baby because Trump wanted it to be forever, ever, 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 ever into the future. And Jack Smith's people wanted it to be December. So I think she cut the baby in half, May 14th. And one friend said, well, isn't that the, still delaying things? Actually, if you think about it, it's not. It's really not doing it. She's actually, everybody's watching her. So I don't think she's doing anything crazy, especially with something with like one point million pieces of evidence to be gone through, et cetera, et cetera. Because first it was going to be August. That was too soon. Then Jack won in December. That was pushing it. Trump wanted it for never and ever and ever. She wasn't having that. So now it's May 14th. So I really have to say, it's not like she's playing into his hands at all. But she also, she really set a whole schedule as to what is going to be going on between now and then. In the meantime, in order to come up with that date, I really feel she re actually went through all the stuff that our Orange Menace was going through court-wise. In other words, what? We have stuff October 23rd. We have the E.G. Carroll thing on, what, the 24th of January. We have January 29th, the class action suit. Then we have our good old New York DA in March 25th. And that's not including the new stuff that's going to be filed by Fannie Willis in Georgia or the new Jack stuff. Now, originally, I had been predicting something about July 27th. I'm still holding on a date that something definitely is happening then. At first, I thought it was all the funny Georgia stuff that was going to be coming out at that point. But then, with everything with Jack, I'm wondering, did I get that messed up? But I still feel the date's right. Something is coming down the 27th of July. And then I do feel Fonnie Willis is really going to, like, gangbusters. She's opening the door. She's going full steam ahead with her RICO charges and everything else. And she has it all lined up. There may have been some delays around what she wanted to do, but I feel she's regrouped. She knows what she's doing. I don't feel there's been a lot of communication between her and Jack. Maybe some, but actually it doesn't matter because they're both doing what they need to do best. So let's see what happens. Okay. But also I feel he is wigging out and now, a while back when I did Linda's show, I sort of said under my breath, well, you have to be alive to be a president. And several people commented on that. Well, I'll be honest with you. His health sucks. I don't feel his health, entertainment purposes only, but I really don't feel his health is in the best place. So even if everything that's going on, I don't know if he's going to really be around. I don't say that with malice. You know, I tell everyone that I surround him with white light, with pink light. I put him in a big pink bubble. I just hope there's not enough air for him to breathe, but that's my own personal opinion. Anyway, moving forward, I would not want to be him. I mean, the only thing that's going to survive him after all of this is going to be his hair and Aquanet. That's it. Okay, so let's keep on going. So that's my whole Trump, Trump de dum de miss highness stuff or Heine stuff. So somebody else had brought up about our good old friend, Clarence Thomas. And the question was, where is the question? I'm sorry. This is my first time doing this, so bear with me. A Dean F, the IRS is now looking at Harlan Froze taxes. They have questions on how he claimed what Clarence claimed as gifts. 
Will this hurt them both? Yes. Yes. Yes, it will. Not only that, but also I've been saying for the longest time that Mr. Clarence Thomas is going down. And a lot of it's going to be attached to his wife, Jenny. Now, I also feel that Jack is going to be bringing stuff out about Jenny. She may not have even touched on some of it yet, but it's all going to be coming out. I originally predicted stuff for this October of 2023. Now I'm believing it's more like October 2024 right before the election and i could just see it now where they say oh we can't bring in a new supreme court justice because it's election year right if that happened before so i really feel they'll have to eat their words i do feel he's going to step down it may be under health reasons quote unquote again this is all for entertainment purposes only but i do feel like i told linda do you ever see a picture of the hindenburg that is where i see him going also, as I had mentioned before, as far as the Supreme Court, I really feel within four to five years that they are going to expand the court to 13 judges. Now, my rationale for that is when they had originally voted for the nine Supreme Court justices that we have today, there were only nine appellate courts. Now there are 13 courts. Now they're trying to get through 13 appellate, uh, Supreme Court justices. So I really feel that's going to happen. Ta-da. And that's going to work out for everyone. I mean, really. And the times are changing. Now, the MAGA people can go scream, holler, do whatever they want. They have no choice. They can't do anything about it. They can't do anything about it. It's going to happen. So on here's a question from Joan Ward. The billionaire owner of the Phoenix Suns is building a mansion with surrounding amusement park in Oakland County, Michigan. He had to buy up surrounding ranch houses for the project. Due to limited resources increasing on Earth, in the future will these restrictions will there be restrictions placed on such projects? In all honesty, Joan, I'm not seeing any restrictions at this time. Maybe in 45 years, but not at this point. Not right now. He what bought 14 acres, it's a project is 14 acres, and he raised and bought five houses to do this. One of them, I believe, actually was his, and it's a 60,000 square foot home he's building, which is going to bring in a lot of revenue and taxes. Also, yes, he's building an amusement park with what waterfalls, an island, um, trampolines. And all this other kind of stuff so god bless them i just hope that maybe they'll be able to open up to the public like neverland sometime and bring in some more money for the revenue for the area that way too but for right now as far as personal restrictions against people building these type of projects i'm not seeing it sorry moving along deb o asks hi arthur Shakira, the singer, is in trouble with tax evasion charges in Spain with two new cases about to open. The current charge, they are seeking a prison term. Well, Deb, I don't see Shakira going to jail. I believe they were, what, they were asking for eight years for tax evasion and fines of what, what, $25 million or something. And this is all based on what, for something from 2014, no, 2012 to 2014, where they say she evaded taxes of what, like 14 euros, which is about $16 million US dollars. But what I'm seeing here is number one, I feel she's going to, she's going to claim she wasn't there long enough to do so to claim residency. Number two, her official residence is in the Bahamas. Number three, I believe she did give some money back and pay some, pay some fines of some sort. But in the meantime, I could be wrong, but in the meantime, I'm not seeing her serving any jail time. There may be some fines, little fines paid here and there, but it's not going to affect the Colombian singer's career whatsoever. She's going to keep on going. So God bless her. That's my personal opinion. That's the way I see it. Now, we did have some questions about whether, whether or not we're going to be here. So first of all, L. Joy asks, Hi, Arthur. 
what do you see regarding earthquake activity in California, northern, southern, for the rest of this year? Thank you. Well, as you know, I live in Los Angeles, and my friends know if one day I just bolt, disappear, and they don't hear from me, that something's wrong. I'm not bolting. I'm not disappearing anytime soon. There's always activity, always, always, always activity everywhere around the world as far as earthquakes are concerned. But I'm not seeing something hitting like the North Ridge quake or San Francisco. I'm not reading oncoming devastation, lives lost. I see people being rattled. I see people being annoyed, but I'm not seeing tons and tons of property damage, at least for right now. I can't say what's going to happen in the next five years, but for what I'm picking up for the next two years, according to my sources and everything, I think we're going to be okay because they're not telling me I'm leaving anytime soon. So that's that question. Now, Anna Hutchinson, will the East Coast have a lot of snow this year, this winter? Yes. Where the weather patterns are right now is everything is extremes. It's just extremes. Way hot, way cold, way wet, a lot of snow. So that's what I feel is going to be happening. And then Catherine Stevens commented, when will climate return to what it used to be? I'm not seeing it returning to what it used to be. This is the new normal for now. In fact, people keep on predicting that within many years to come that the deserts will have water. There will be no deserts. In the meantime, I also feel Florida is going to get some, some into some trouble this year. I feel there's going to be two devastating hur hurricanes coming up on each coast. And one of them is going to be very devastating. There will be lives lost. And I believe, as Linda said on one of her shows, when you hear the word, get the heck out of there. Do not try and weather the storm, as they say. Get out. Because it's not something, everything's getting worse and worse. I mean, everything is being more extreme and more extreme. The only, if you want to call it good thing that can come out of this, is I really feel when this devastation hits our lovely Ron don't say gay to Satan it's going to show his true colors it's going to show that he really doesn't care and Casey I don't somebody called her trash Onassis the other day I couldn't stop laughing but I don't think she'll have another hurricane relief fund because of what happened last time but I do feel this is going to be enough for people to show who he really is, what he's all about, and the man doesn't care. All he cares about are causing people grief, causing people heartache, causing people to cry at night about their children. I mean, the minute they personal, the minute they they banned the book of Rosa Parks from the bookshelves. To me, that is like insane, personal opinion, entertainment, entertainment purposes only. Anyway, so moving forward, Lavetta Smith, I love your meditation video so much. Thank you. You are wonderful. I know. I know, <laughs> I know you will be a huge success. Well, thank you again. I'm wondering if there's an earthquake surrounding Springfield, Illinois to change the flow of the Mississippi River, making it deeper if it's large enough, if it's a large enough earthquake. I'm not reading that. I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling all of a sudden there's an earthquake and Mississippi divides the country in two, at least not for the next 500 years. So I'm not seeing it. But she also asks, not weather-related, 
I've been waiting to hear from my loving husband who passed away six years ago or someone who could come through. I know it would be, I know it would find me much peace. I miss him so. First, I'm sorry for your loss. But as you know, we never die. We never go away. In fact, I would suggest a book for you to look at called Many Lives, Many Masters by Dr. Brian Weiss. I'll put it in, in the comments below or the about below. Many times, well, as Linda asked if I was a medium, I said a medium rare. But what I'm feeling is many times I feel he has tried to contact you. It's just that you're not hearing it. And sometimes it's as simple as turning on the television, hearing something on the radio, hearing a song, hearing a lyric, uh, seeing Vanna White spin some words, and those are the words we need to hear or see. So it's simple as that. So just keep in tune to that. I remember one time I was with a friend of mine. Her husband, unfortunately, died in a uh, motorcycle accident with a drunk driver. And he was into heavy metal. That was him, heavy metal. And we were in a store one day. She was talking about, I don't hear from my husband that much. Like I, 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 I wish I did. And I just started laughing. I said, what? And she says, what? I said, listen to the music. And it was actually music in the grocery store. And she started giggling. It was some, she said, this is one of his favorite songs, but I've never heard it as music before. I said, well, that's, that's how they work sometimes. So she was comforted by that. And, and things go on. Now, Sabrina, hi, my dog passed away two weeks ago. I'm sorry. I really need to know her passing was peaceful and what message she has for me right now. Thank you. Again, medium rare, but I am picking up a little doggy that wants you to know she's fine. It's just fine. What message? I don't know if this makes sense or not, but stop holding on to everything. You don't have to have a shrine. You can get rid of some of the stuff. You don't have to hold on to everything. So I hope that helps. Now, Janet. Casimir asked. I feel a real heart connection to one of my cats, pronounced Bashi. Does he have the spirit of a dog or a cat I had in the past? Was he sent to me? Odd. Uh, but are we soulmates? Well, basically, we're all spirit. Any critter is a spirit. And yes, I believe someone's coming back to visit you. They're not telling me who. But I really feel you know who it is because they never left you. And you'll look in their eyes and it's like that so-and-so staring back at me. So can our critters be our soulmates? Of course they can. Of course. Soulmates are, they come to us to help us get to the next level in our lives. Sometimes people get it confused thinking, oh, it's my soulmate. So that's going to be my boyfriend or my girlfriend or my lover. Not always. Just because we meet somebody from our past lives doesn't always mean we end up with them in this life. It just means there's a connection. And the connection you're feeling with Bashi, actually, I feel at times is a combination of more than one of your critters comes through. So take that to heart. I'm not the best when it comes to animals. I have to be honest with you, but this is what I get. So thanks. John Holden asks, I love your guided meditations and affirmations. Thank you. Can you share a little bit more about them? Thank you and welcome for your first show, to your first show. First of all, as you know, when Mel first suggested that I do a show, um, I basically, and he said, do a show. And I said, what are you on crack? And he said, well, you know, start with doing guided meditations. So 14 meditations later, um, this is what I've been doing. Um, 
the guided meditations are there to help you get to various levels in your life, to help you sleep, find peace, find harmony within yourself. And people often say, well, I fell asleep during it. Well, that's okay. You may think you're sleeping, you may not be sleeping, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you're in your subconscious level, you're hearing what's being said and you're relaxed. And also the affirmations are there to help infuse your spirit, your subconscious, and just become the person you're supposed to be. In the meantime, my suggestion is listen to them, put them on, loop them. It'll help me get hours on YouTube, <laughs> but also loop them and just listen. And if you find many clients have told me that they've had trouble with insomnia, they can now sleep. Now the process is, yes, I write them. I do have a writing partner who's very spiritually centered, a wonderful writer that we come up with ideas. He will send me things. I rewrite, we go back and forth. And then I go into a recording studio, record, and then I edit. And then as many know, many people, I am a composer. So I put music on the bottom of it. Actually, it's more like soundscapes as opposed to writing original music. So then that's all put together. And then since it's on YouTube, we do video. But instead of using like, I would say in pastoral, like lakes and forests and butterflies and stuff like that, what I prefer to do is just put some abstract graphics or abstract videos up there. Main reason because you're supposed to close your eyes, so you shouldn't be watching it anyway. So just close your eyes and that's how we do it. So do the writing, recording, the music, the video editing, and then we put it up. It usually takes, they can take about two to three weeks to do each one. So I try and do one to two a month. So thank you for asking, John. And I do enjoy doing them. Okay, Leah comments. Arthur, hello. Your work is in tremendous demand. When I saw the type of videos you make, it made me happy. Some of us need a starting point. How can we help family in distress? My son has incredible qualities. Still, I would love to learn to love himself and channel his energies. His name is Zach. He is a dad. Well, Liam... I would suggest that you go to my very first video ever, even before I did the guided meditations. It's called How to Love Yourself. I was about 12 when I did it, sort of. And basically, it's a very simple technique where you talk, it's called healing the inner child. Where you put your hands on your tummy, you say your name, and then I am loving you. I am loving you your name. It's as simple as that. It's from a book by Robert Jameson, The Keys to Joy Filled Living. So double check that on my YouTube page. I'll put a link below and start there. Because if we don't love ourselves, how can anyone love us, etc, etc, etc. So that's how you love yourself. Okay. And speaking of love, I love you all. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much to the fact you're going to be liking this show. Thank you so much you're going to share the show. But also thank you for just being here. I really appreciate it. So, as I always say, have fun and stay amazing. This is Arthur. Bye-bye.